was the concluding which was the concluding class swamiji reviewed the text of tattva bodha in this text we have gone through most of the basic theories of vedanta after the invocation acharya ji explains the four fold sadhana called sadhana chatushtheya this is the qualification of the seeker of vedanta the relative existence called satya and mithya real and unreal was talked about and swami ji emphasized that viveka or discriminative knowledge must be understood clearly when we search for this we understand that the all pervading consciousness is the only reality everything other than that is all unreal whatever experience we have physically and mentally are all different functions appearances and manifestations of mithya so they should not be taken as real experiences when the mind changes all these also change then swami ji explained the first definition of atma and how atma is connected with the three bodies stula sukshma and karana sharira in these three states the experiencer is atma not what is experienced the experience is connected to the objects outside atma is beyond all these bodies this can be directly experienced when we contemplate on the atma therefore one can forget all the problems pain sorrows which happen through these bodies all these are connected to the body and not connected to the atma this is the right understanding of the self if we contemplate on these experiences we understand that we are beyond the causal body that is atma we have discussed this already swami ji then this talked about the indriyas the 10 organs the organs of perception and the organs of action next the five sheets the pancha koshas were discussed these are the annamaya kosha the pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha the vijnanamaya kosha and the anandamaya kosha or the bliss sheet the bliss sheet is there in all the other sheets or levels of experience objects change and the reaction changes but the bliss remains the same the bliss is the nature of atma the anandamaya kosha is not atma but behind the anand anandamaya kosha the atma is experienced next the swarupa lakshanam of atma was explained satchitananda is the essential nature of self then was discussed the chapter which started with creation and maya and the role of maya in vedanta maya is the identical creative power of ishvara maya has no independent existence it is identical with ishvara in the discussion of creation we then went on to study panchikaranam or the grossification theory then we saw that the individual consciousness called personal consciousness or existence which we call jivatma and the universal consciousness are essentially one and the same that is tattvam asi the foremost theory of vedanta here the microcosm and the macrocosm are the same only the upadhis are different the manifestations are different the jivan mukta is one who has realized this theory and practices it while living in this physical body she is the liberated soul after that we discuss the importance and necessity for a physical guru we understand all these theories and then we have to practice them for that a guru is necessary the last part was about the three types of karmas the agami karma sanchita karma and prarabdha karma we talked about punya and papa the karma theory has nothing to do with knowledge because karma cannot bring a, bring knowledge then we saw the concluding part shankaracharya concludes with what he stated in the beginning this is the system of teaching in our shastras called upakrama and upasamhara the teacher says what he is going to teach this is stated directly in the beginning that is the upakrama after the discussions in the very end once again that is said and this is the upasamhara in this way by this sadhana the experience of self the experiencer of self crosses the samsara of pain and sorrow and is without birth and death 
There is no chance for any action and reaction. She is bliss. She uses her mind and body to only maintain the continuation of Pradabdha karma. Whatever is left of, the, of that Pradabdha karma is used only to maintain the body. How is it possible to cross samsara? This is the special theory of Vedanta. Swamiji mentioned that it is only in Vedanta where it says that you can be a realized one in this very birth itself. You experience Atma or ultimate realization and this can be got in this very birth. The Kathopanishad states, states Vimuktascha vimuchyate. You are liberated. There was no bondage. There was only superimposition and confusion. There is no bondage for space. Akasha, as it is all-pervading. Self is a substratum of everything, so it cannot be bound. The, the liberated one is always liberated, but the realization of liberation was not there. The sadhaka felt she was in bondage. Now the confusion has gone after the discriminative knowledge of Vedanta. Therefore, it says, Vimuktascha vimuchyate, meaning that the liberated one is liberated. Now, Acharya Ji talks about Shruti and Smriti. The knower of self will have no sorrows. This is the last result of self-knowledge. If you do not know yourself, you identify yourself with body, mind, prana, intellect, ego, and definitely you face all the troubles of this body-mind complex. This is from the Shruti. Now, from Smriti, the shloka says, once the sadhaka experiences this Brahman, she may live anywhere in the world, she may die anywhere, that is of no significance to her because she has already moved beyond these boundaries. Smriti means the Hindu code book. It codifies the rules and regulations for a Hindu practitioner. To the realized person, it is immaterial if she dies either in Kashi or in the house of a dog eater. Nothing changes. She will get all the bliss and experience of Brahma because she is liberated at the time when she attains the knowledge itself and then she has no karmas. With this, Swamiji pointed out that we have completed Tattva Bodha. The text says, thus we have completed or accomplished the completion of Tattva Bodha. Tattva Bodha Prakarana. The word used here is Samaptam which means accomplished or is completed. Swamiji concluded emphasizing that we need to revise what we have learned and then practice the same. As this is the last session of the Tattva Bodha classes, Dr. Kamala would like to say a few words after which Swamiji will take questions. Hari Om, Dr. Kamala. Yeah. Sorry, the audio and the video is off. Om Namah Narayana. Pranam Swamiji, welcome everyone. I'm happy to say that we are in the concluding class of Tattva Bodha. This study group was started under the Brahma Vidya Pidam, which is headed by Swamiji, Puja Swamiji. Swamiji selected this beautiful text, Tattva Bodha, the very basic text, and we started these classes in March 20, 2023. Swamiji, we are very grateful to you for explaining this very basic text, which is necessary for our spiritual understanding. The depth of the classes and the simple, deep and clear way in which Swamiji explained to us will help us move along this path with ease. Tattva is a text of definitions. The text started with an invocation and then it went on to Sadhana Chatushtya Sambhati. They are Nitya Nitya Vastu Viveka, Vairagya, Samadhi Shatka Sambhati, namely Shamadama, Uparama Titiksha, Shraddha uh, sam, Samadhana. And the last, but the most important one is Mumokshutta. Then we saw Satya and Mitya or understanding of the reality. The beautiful definition of Atma was elaborated next. 
It is defined as being different from the three sharidas, different from the five koshas. And it is the avastatre sakshi. The swarupam of the atma is Satchitananda. Then we discuss the universal confusion or misunderstanding about the atma and how this can be resolved. We looked into the negation of everything is not I, means neti neti. We discussed extending the no one known boundaries, that invariable consciousness, that I is the Atma Swarupa. Consciousness is not an object and therefore cannot be displaced. We should be able to discern what is not real and so that Atma is not mortal and it is the truth of time. Unhappiness is contradictory to one's nature and Atma is free from this. Atma has no limitation of space and nothing is away from Atma. It is the ignorance that denies the recognition of being limitless. The wholeness is never lost. Ananda is ananda, limitlessness. The Surupa ananda and it is the experiential ananda too. Stula sharira, sushma sharira, panjat jnanendriya, their functions and their presiding deities, panja karmendriyas, their functions, and karana sharira were all talked about. Avidya is anadi and beginningless, and it is anirvajaniya. Next, we went to the avastatriya, and there are then there are the five basic levels of our understanding and the removing of the errors about the atma. We saw that Atma is not Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, and Anandamaya Kosha. Atma is Satchit Ananda. When we went on to the understanding of Satchit Ananda, then we went on to the understanding of Satchit Ananda. This is the first part of the text. The second part is about creation. Brahma along with Maya is the cause of the jagat. We saw the creation of the five elements. From the Satyuka aspect of the five elements comes the subtle sense organs, creation and the nature of the mind, the Andhakarana and the presiding deities of the mental function. From the Rajas, Rajas aspect comes the five organs of action. Then Grossification of these five elements were elaborated. From the tamas aspect of the five elements comes the tangible world. The process of grossification, the identity of the identity of the individual and cosmos, that is Jiva and Ishwara, samsara due to Bheda Drishti, and the understanding of oneness and implied meaning, that is the Lekshyartha and Jivan Mukti the necessity of the Guru, the Jivan Mukta, and the three type of karma, Sanjida Agami and Prarabdha Karmas, the threefold karma of the Jivan Mukta. Swamiji explained how the one who knows Atma crosses the sorrow. This is what we have seen in the last many, many classes. These are heading under which we learn Tattva Bodha. We will have the questions and answer session today. Each person should ask only one question, after which they will be muted. They can mute by themselves also. After everyone gets a chance, if time permits, we can have a second round. At least about 70% in the group attended these classes through the Zoom meetings, YouTube, and listen later. That is great. I'm so pleased to say that several people have messaged me personally to say that this has been a life-changing experience. Even if a handful of people benefit, the purpose of these classes is fulfilled. I thank Swamiji for spending this much time in spite of Swamiji's busy schedule, just so that 
we gain some clarity and understanding of the subject. I thank the admins who contributed to the running of this class smoothly. Special thanks to three, Sri Rakesh Peter, who, take, who took care of the Zoom meeting, video, and YouTube. And few of us have helped in many ways, like giving summary and doing transcription and in many other ways. My gratitude to all the members who listened to it and who participated in this. And those who would like to express their feelings about how they benefited from the class and how it has impacted them can do so. Probably from this, seeing our involvement and effort and understanding, Swamiji may decide about the next class and when to start. Thank you, everyone. Pranam Swamiji once again. Thank you very much. Hari Om. Om Namo Narayana to everybody. Especially uh, today, I am in uh, Jagannath Puri. So one of the famous uh, holy place of Hindus. So we are uh, having some program here. So after uh, this uh, session, we will be uh, rushing to the temple we have. that uh, we could uh, do the conclusion of Tattvabodha in the premises of Bhagavan Jagannatha, the Lord Jagannatha. So now what I, I wanted to ask questions, but uh, you don't be afraid that it would be an exam of uh, no, I, or interview or like said. It's no, it's uh, to, just to review. But uh, now, just now listening to Anjali's uh, summary and again, Dr. Uh, Kamalaji's uh, uh, beautiful summary and uh, conclusion of the all test now you got all the answers so there is and now if i am asking question you already got the answers it means the question paper leaked so, <laughs> therefore so what i'm trying to say is uh, so uh, i wanted to know the the response and feedback of these classes as uh, just now Kamalaji mentioned, uh, we will take up the next uh, test book of Vedanta according to that, because these uh, test books one after another are uh, connected. It's not really literally connected, but theoretically there is some more explanation, some deep uh, you know, discussions and like that. So therefore, uh, I definitely likely to like to know your uh, uh, responses and with your uh, questions, anything you want to ask, anything you want to clarify on this Sattva So any word, meaning or the concept, conveyed, uh, anything. So that can be asked. Yeah. So. All will get uh, one chance. No, in single chance, you should uh, perform your best. That's that's uh, exam. So only one chance because we have no time to you know, continue with this. So therefore, uh, we just give you our uh, spontaneous uh, response and then uh, 
uh, if any any change you want uh, in the in the sessions uh, you want to add something uh, some improvement or some suggestions uh, everything is welcome okay now over to you uh, to ask if somebody wants to write they can write also You can write. So both options are there. Okay, so over to you for the questions and, and uh, feedback. Oh, where is your? Uh, should I unmute everybody or? Uh... Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, you can unmute everybody, but uh, uh, there should be some uh, communication. Yes. Uh, so who wants, wants, they can raise their hand, or uh, they can. You know, uh, we can. We sign. can. Uh, yeah, we yeah. can unmute only those who want it. They can otherwise, raise the uh, hand. The, okay. The video will be uh, crowded, and then the sound uh, will be affected. And here, especially, I don't have uh, Wi-Fi. I'm uh, just uh, adjusting with the. Uh, Therefore, uh, you can take up like that. Yeah, I think Ajita has asked a question. Let me unmute her. Ajita, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hari Om Swamiji. And um, um, ever grateful to you for uh, your lucid explanation of this wonderful text. Um, so fundamental these terminologies are for us to understand the other texts in Vedanta. And you've done an amazing job of making it seem so simple through uh, very using very apt examples. Um, on all, in everybody's behalf, I um, have you know I am expressing my gratitude, Swamiji. And this is one question. Some a couple of them are not able to attend uh, today's class, so they have uh, passed on their questions, and uh, I will ask uh, on their behalf and also on all our behalf. One of the questions are uh, is. Uh, Agami karma is only for human beings and not for animals. But human uh, birth is evolved over many births as animals. In that case, how is the repository of Sanchita karma created? Yeah, this is uh, uh, an important question regarding karma. Uh, I think uh, you remember that According to our uh, theory of karma you know, in Vedanta, only human being can perform new karmas. Only human being can uh, create new karmas. The reason is, now we say punya and pava, good karmas and bad karmas, merits and demerits. So these merits and demerits are uh, uh, systematically established or uh, what you say, uh, according to the Shastras. So it can say it is purely religious concept that the merit and demerits. Now all world when we see in different cultures, their Pumni and Paba is different. Now, if we see Hinduism, our punyas and pabas, good karmas and bad karmas are different. In other religion, good karmas and bad karmas are totally different. There may be opposite uh, you know, understanding. And more emphasis for ahimsa. Now, in other religion, they don't give that much emphasis on ahimsa. So such things are there. Therefore, according to, we can say, in accordance with uh, our Shastras, the karmas are, uh, new karmas are created by human beings. So it means we have two chances. We are using two chances simultaneously. One is, that we have, we had already accumulated karma, which we say 
संचित कर्मा आउट ऑफ दो वी गेट सम फ्रूट सम इफेक्ट दैट इज बीइंग एक्सपीरियंस इज बीइंग गिवन इज ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड when the those karmas are giving the fruit the giving the effort we call those karmas the 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 bundle of karmas which are giving the fruit is called parabdha prarabdha karma is there for all the living beings even for uh, no like uh, virus and uh, bacteria and all the other uh, they have prarabdha karma uh, no uh, corona virus also had some prarabdha karma now that karma is completed so it disappeared uh, it's, it's like that it came with some prarabdha karma and we we so its effect and now that is complete so this is all connected to that here yeah, this is called parabdha but this uh, uh, other beings other than human beings they cannot perform any new karmas they can only uh, experience karmas therefore it is called bhoga yonis i i specially took this point and specifically said this should be remembered there is bhoga yoni and karma yoni so bhoga yoni means only they can experience this is one sided whatever is given whatever is already programmed they should work accordingly they will work like that they cannot create anything new but uh, human beings are both they can create new actions new thoughts even they can change their dna that is proved now so by their will power why they were new actions new performance with their free will they can even change their dna and change their mind everything but it should it should be according to the previous karma this is the uh, confusion here uh, because you got the birth for that i said the situation is created by the previous karma the body is created uh, the place where you are now that place where you uh, you took birth or living now where you are living this is the situation created but the uh, when we do new karmas we have freedom to uh, understand the situation and do according to our will so the will which is going to the free will which is going to change your destiny so the, this is the this is the connection there and uh, people ask this uh, question um, uh, frequently that uh, can we change our destiny this is the question asked is possible to change the destiny but according to the karma theory no destiny can be changed but it can be diluted it can be diverted it can be uh, opposed by free will if you have free will it can be blocked and changed or uh, it can be diverted or it can be diluted it means you have a high fever so without reason nothing will appear if there is fever there is some reason some karma is there some you were uh, no you uh, did something wrong and then all this uh, situation and then the atmosphere atmosphere or so if there is some changes and all this will be there for the fever but now you have the chance you can take medicine proper medicine and you can keep the body clean and no just to uh, take rest and do things like that or you just uh, uh leave the fever <coughs> to act on you to work on you and do your business that also you can do so then there is a chance for again uh, now getting into more problems so this is the connection there so even in small things when we uh, no drink a sip of uh, coffee or tea 
even in that this both are connected will free will and it means our desire and the karmas so how you get and how you enjoy it so when i get a coffee i can enjoy it very well even a drop of that if i i concentrate on that i can sip and enjoy it so uh, otherwise if i am uh, worried with something else or my mind is not, uh, not in that uh, drinking no uh, taking coffee so it then how is this connected so to say uh, in this uh, if we make a statement on this we can say that in human being in all actions two karmas are simultaneously working one is sanchita karma and no, prarabdha karma which we call it as destiny and other is purushartha purushartha means your desire your decision your will power uh, that that's also working together so this is the combination that's the answer of uh, this question uh, we, we will be understanding more about this this uh, karma theory you know it's, it's a very interesting if you are going to go into more deeper level you will understand every action even one you know, even single thought what you think that has some karma it will it will create some effect uh, it's beautiful to understand that so more you concentrate and more you give strength to the thoughts those thoughts we uh, no manifest uh, in in a, no no in a better way that wish wish uh, be helpful for you okay so therefore i said in that i remember i told you repeatedly that positive thought is the best remedy for all the problems you just do just think positive in any cause in any condition so that is the ultimate medicine ultimate remedy for all the mental problems all the physical problems all the relationship problems all like the the whole world may change if you uh, adopt this, if the whole world adopts this so this is uh, what i can say now uh, yeah over to you for the next question Uh, can i take uh, one minute in between sure okay. so sorry, sorry. yes uh, i am back yes so i mean yeah i i i had an experience actually recently i had a fall and fractured my uh, right hmm. shoulder so you know i was just telling my hand it is your part of the i can't do anything so you have to manage so swami ji was telling only the prarabdha and you know we have to take it and we have to go with that that is it actually that's why i did you know i switched off my video very very practical advice from swami ji and i am really thankful to swami ji for guiding me through my pain everything thank you samji when you accept something uh no there is no opposition there is no uh what you say the problem which we have to solve the acceptance uh, is the 
solution for all this. So this is what uh, uh, now Dr. Uh, Kamalaji is experiencing. Because whatever happened, happened, just accept it. Then there uh, is no need to no, no, do anything against that. So this that's very good. We pray for you uh, from our side. That is our feelings to feeling to you. That's uh, that, that is there always. Uh, Swamiji, there is a question from Lata S. Yes. Uh, I'm reading it out on her behalf. Hariyom Swamiji, don't have words to me. Don't have words to express the gratitude for taking us through the Tattva Bodha text with so detailed and simplified explanations, feel that we are so blessed for getting this opportunity, will definitely imbibe the spirit of these teachings and will make it useful for ourselves and those around us, eagerly awaiting the Atma Bodha lessons. I have these three doubts, if time permits, kindly clarify. Swamiji, I'll read out all the three questions. Uh, one, oh. this Jnani, Sthita Pratnya and Jeevan Mukta mean the same. For such a person, will it be his last life? Or will there be still Sanchita Karmas left, which may result in more births? Um, should I um, read out all the three questions or just wait for your... Yeah, it's all connected. You... It's the answer would be the same for all, I think. Uh, the second one says, there is the belief that if a person dies in Kashi, he will be liberated. In his lifetime, he might have done good and bad karmas. Does it mean that there will be no impact of these karmas and all the karma phalas end with this liberation? The third question is, while discussing about Vairagya, Swamiji had told that too much attachment to Ishvara is also not good. But for a bhakta who relies entirely on God, will it be possible? Hello. Yeah, I think uh, many of uh, you also have this uh, you know, related questions, no? <laughs> it's a subject. Yeah, so I think I can take uh, this point. First uh, thing is jnani and jivan mukta, sthita pratnya. All these words are used in Sanskrit to to describe the same person. The definition and meaning is the same. So jnani means one who got knowledge. So he is enlightened. Sthita pratnya means whose mind is established in the supreme, on, uh, in, in supreme, or we can say he is one with the supreme, Consciousness. That is Tita Pratnya. And Jivan Mukta, we already know, who, who is a lighter and liberator while in this birth. So with this body, in this very human life. So therefore, it's, it's a different views, uh, different uh, uh, no, uh, definitions. The same person as uh, Liberated one is called the Pratnya, Jnani, and Jivan. And the next question, which is connected to the belief, because we have uh, many beliefs in uh, all religions which cannot be logically proved, but experientially. It can be proved. So there is no logic to say how a person who lives in Kashi may liberate in his death or after his death. This is purely religious understanding. In our Puranas, mainly in Puranas, and some of the Veda sentences, Veda words are also there related to this. 
because you know in indian philosophy there were uh the ashtanikas philosophers who were only following logic to everything they tried to use the logic at its maximum that we call nayayikas uh, and all others even in vedanta in a uh, many school of vedanta they use uh, logic to prove everything so that logic is different from the logic what we use now this point should be carefully uh, no understand this uh, taken into consideration that the logic we use and the logic the philosophers of vedanta uses is different what is said in the scriptures and what they experience they uses the uh, the they use the uh, logic to prove that what is experienced and what is there in our scriptures okay they don't just uh, take uh, uh, a logic and try to prove anything now it's is not uh, their way but what we do is uh since we don't have so much knowledge of scripture so much uh, uh that uh, kinds of uh, experiences so many experiences that we uh, have is obviously a normal experience so with this normal experiences we cannot prove anything logically in that way this is the problem here where we struggle our all life understand all this now i will uh, take up the kashi uh, no that how the karmas uh, are destroyed there is a story which says if somebody dies in kashi the uh, is not in kashi this town they they have a uh, the limitation the special area where they die and that uh, time since uh, that we believe that shiva the lord shiva the lord, lord vishwanatha is residing there so uh, he is so kind to the people of kashi uh, who are lives there so he blesses the person who is uh, dying and chant the omkara mantra and the rama mantra that is what the story the omkara and this and then this consider as a, as a what is a initiation for that person to understand to realize the self what we talk in vedanta so this is the connection there like uh, when we study something we 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 destroy some of our bad karmas therefore our mind changes now when we study gita when we study uh, vedantas or any anything like that some of our uh, bad karmas are destroyed and they are changed therefore we get some bliss we enjoy it and after that our mind changes and our life changes now without changes in those karmas if those karmas are not destroyed how can you change your life when you meet a meet a, 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 a guru or a, a spiritual teacher after just a meet and uh, with with, with uh, while uh, while talking to the person your thought changes your life changes now many people many maybe uh, millions of people experience this even in this world so this is quite possible that uh, if something happens there if they get the knowledge this is the uh, reason they releases their karma now third point can be added with the practical logic 
now what we call is a practical knowledge that is because in kashi even today yes, kashi is one of the oldest religious cities in the world you know that so even today when you go to kashi there are so many scholars of almost all the subjects of our hindu religion so any 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 of the uh, houses you enter and even you stay in a hotel there you will get some knowledge even the hotel boy who is serving you he 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 will be a special he will give some uh, knowledge of religion and some knowledge of brahman and like that so it's interesting so they know everything no everywhere you get something and even uh, the people who are not uh, following hindu religion the other religious people they are i want to say if you go you will go to kashi and definitely you will get some uh, ideas and some some words of vedanta or something of uh, no some knowledge of vedanta so you will think about that contemplate on that and you will be liberated so this is this can be a practical uh, you know uh, logic and reason added to this so these are the reason and now the third thing is vairagya and ishvara so why i said that attachment and there is a difference between attachment and devotion no devotion and attachment is two different thing so that uh, what i can give a simple ex uh, example uh devotees mainly uh, mainly uh, devotees we take devotees if they if they are doing daily pujas their daily worships of god their uh, no their ishta deva uh, the the form of god they like to meditate on they are doing puja and they are meditating they are doing japa and all this so this is because they say because of devotion they are doing all this now if one day with uh, unavoid uh, because of unavoidable circumstances if they could not do this puja or japa or whatever their practice then if they are disturbed the person the devotee is disturbed mentally and uh, you know he is disturbed because i could not do i could not do puja uh my 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 god or no my uh the deva uh, will be annoyed with me and what would, what would happen to me this i i could not follow this prayer if he is feeling so then i call it it is not devotion it is this attachment like to one of your best friend uh uh you are chatting with the friend for hours daily for one day he or she could not uh, chat with you and uh, do any conversation so that would be your feeling so that is because of attachment because today uh, i don't know what happened to my friend i don't know uh, what is going to happen you know so say so all this uh, thoughts come and you are disturbed this we don't say uh, it is devotion this is attachment too much attachment because this attachment breaks your even your common sense your your common sense is uh, hijacked by the attachment so then then what is the meaning so this this idea i wanted to convey so when when we understand uh, with shastras and uh, logics and uh, experiences it should be very very comfortable it should not disturb but everything every action every performance what we do should give us more energy 
more uh, comfort, more uh, steadiness of mind, more coolness of mind. So if in any cause, if there is a disturbance in the mind, this is not uh, prescribed or subscribed or accepted in our sadhana. So that is what I wanted to convey. So understand from this uh, viewpoint. Okay. So uh, I pardon. I have, uh, we have now only uh, 10 minutes left because I said I have to go for another program. So 10 to, 10 to I can say, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Mm. So you so can we, ask questions in this time. Yeah, I think Ajita has a question sent to her from someone else, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to ask this question on uh, behalf of Dr. Hema, who's been attending these classes ah. regularly, but she couldn't make it today. So her ah. question was, Swamiji, Ahankaram and Mamakaram are the root causes of all problems. Ahankaram. In our daily Vyavara, Ahankaram. Swamiji, are you able to hear me? Ah, Ahankara and Mamakara? Mama, uh, are the root cause of all problems. Ah, okay. Okay. In daily Vyavara, Ahankara uh, raises its head uh, and to assert it, assert in its view uh, or do, to dominate. How do we tackle this? Okay. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, we can say, Ahankara, the I-ness which we call ego. And Mamakara, just now what we said, as minus, which is, which, uh, which is uh, attachment or connection with the objects. So, of course, this is the cause of all the actions and reactions and problem and solutions and everything. I not, uh, not only for problems, but for solutions also you need some ahankara and mamakara. So, as I said, uh, if you want to practice sadhana, uh, you want to devote yourself to God, you need some, some ahankara. I am a devotee. So uh, I am a devotee. I should practice this. And this is my practice. This is my offering to God. So when you offer something to God, uh, first what you think, this is my. Uh, I am offering this to God. So if you don't that minus, minus connection, how can you offer something to God? Because which is not belonging to you, how can you offer to others? You got the point, no? So therefore, even for good things, you need some ego, some ahankara and mamakara. And I don't say this ahankara and mahakara, mamakara, this uh, inus and minus is totally bad. I say it has different uh, characters that we call it sattvika, rajasika, tamasika, because in each, uh, uh, no, each, but what you say, whatever it is there, we have all this uh, uh, separation of this sattva and rajas tamas. This you can see in Bhagavad Gita. If you like to read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, 18th chapter, this sattva, raja and tama. Uh, and this is discussed there. And before that, Gunatrai Vibhaga Yoga, 17th chapter. So if you read these two chapters, you will understand each thought, each, each feeling as three characters. So this way, if you understand, we need to have some willpower to do good things. So that willpower is connected to aham, because it's also by ego. Uh, and uh, when, whenever you feel something, you say, uh, I am hurted, uh, ego hurt. 
So this is hurt. How you feel hurt? Because you have ego. How you feel love? Because you have ego. Without ego, you cannot feel love. Or you cannot love others. So this is the ego connected to love is not uh, considered as a bad thing. It is very good. Without that, you cannot carry love. If I don't, I don't have ego, how can I love anybody? I am not carrying anything. So I am totally free. Uh, people may connect to us and I may forget them. I have no connection. I don't remember their name. I don't remember their face. It's a problem for us. Like, you no, know, where sannyasins, we travel you know, all over India and we meet many people. And then sometimes when they meet again, we remember their face and all things. No, if, if we don't remember, we don't react uh, you know, uh, positively as a friend to them. They feel bad. Oh, Swamiji forgot me. I say, how we uh, uh, it means uh, Swamiji, Swamiji never remember because they they always say you remember us in your prayers and pray for us and all those. So we <laughs> we, say, <laughs> we always say that we do prayers to all Sarve Bhavantu Sukhna. But uh, that is a feeling because we uh, we cannot say that. We, Connection, no, it, that it creates. So therefore, there should be some uh, ingredient, some some uh, uh, something should be there for connecting. So that is ego. That is the that is the feeling. Now, when you feel gratitude, so now you are all saying the gratitude. No. So the what is the feeling of gratitude? So without ego, you, can you feel gratitude? No. You are feeling that you have got something. So when you got something, you are uh, satisfied with that, then you show your gratitude, then you th say th uh, thank you and all those. So this is all connected to you. So therefore, the, the, the sadhaka should understand the sattvika ego, rajasvika ego and tamasika ego. So the ego which uh, disturb your mind, ego which uh, force you to do bad things or disturbing actions. So that ego is not, uh, no, it, it, it is not uh, uh, good to maintain. As soon as possible, you just should uh, try to remove that ego, which make ne negative thoughts, which leads you to trouble and unnecessary disturbance of mind. So try to understand the difference between this ego and minus and all this. Okay? Yeah. So can we have one more question? Please? Yeah, I think uh, one more question. Uh, this is uh, uh, Sri Pavan. Would uh, you mute yourself, please? Om Swamiji. Om. Okay, I won't go with any questions. I just want to share my experience. Uh, yeah. No, about some two, because there's nobody has shared their experiences. So yeah. about some two, two and a half years back, I started following the path of uh, Swami Sivananda. I had so many doubts and so on and so forth. And yeah. uh, then two years back, I visited Kashi also. And last year, actually, incidentally, I met, uh, I came to Uttarakashi also and I met you, Swamiji. <laughs> and I, no, started I, 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 I remember you. Just now, I remember you very well. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so in the last two years, I have been trying to, practice sadhana and I have seen the, some some changes for myself and uh, after I started off with Tattva Bodha, actually I have not understood many things so co compared to what uh, Dr. Kamala has, uh, has understood probably I understood only 5%, 10%, not more <laughs> but, but at least it was good, it, it gave me some good routing it, some of the things that I had I, I finally realized that this is the path that I want to take. And what I actually did is I quit my job. I put in my resignation letter. And next year, October uh, 2024, there is a one and a half year course uh, program uh, in Yoga Vedanta, um, uh, in, in Gudur uh, Swami Sivananda Yoga Vedanta Tapasvini Ashram. And yeah. I am actually joining that course under the tutelage of uh, um, uh, Swami Janardhanananda. Uh, yeah. So 
So this was actually one of the things which helped me to make up my mind that, hey, look, first I should get that thing straightened up, then I should live in the world. So this course was, to that extent, it was impactful and very helpful to me, Swamiji. Okay. Om Swamiji. Okay, okay. Thank you uh, for your uh, response and uh, feedback and with your experiences because uh, what you said is right. Uh, with uh, understanding five percent, five percent of uh, what uh, the Tattva says, if you have this uh, uh, decision and you could uh, uh, make a decision on this, it's something wonderful. No, then I can say that you have a good future. Oh, so you, you are, when you understand more, and you will get into that. So it's, uh, it's very well. Uh, yeah, keep up and. Uh, uh, make the mind uh, more uh, strong and clear on these thoughts. Yeah, thank you. So now uh, you can test me whatever uh, other thoughts and questions and uh, suggestions, you know, all those. Uh, I will uh, find time to uh, answer them and give my feedbacks on them. And then, uh, yeah, maybe the next class, next session, uh, the same thing I will be traveling in between. Uh, but, uh, I hope that uh, I will reach a, a place where I can do the class. So then we will start and you are all agreeing with this that I hope you are all agreeing with this uh, or uh, if some other options you have if you want to study something else or you know some other options you want to uh, see that is also there we have one big time so if I get uh, you know, after uh, maybe by by uh, Friday, before Friday, this Friday, if I get uh, your feedback, if you want to study something more or something else that you can suggest, because it is said in our tradition that the students should ask the, uh, the teacher to teach what, what the, they want. This is one way of, if uh, the students are uh, uh, too much ignorant. If they're they are they don't just dull. They don't know anything about. It. Then the teacher can be said and teach them because they don't know what to ask and where they don't have an idea. So I don't think you are you are all that much dull. So you you can ask and they can give your suggestion on the subjects. And uh, yeah, if I am able to do that, definitely we will continue with that. Anyway, we'll continue these classes with the other sessions. So uh, the, the traditional method and uh, sequence is after Tattva Bodha, we take Atma Bodha. Okay, Atma Bodha, the, the, the self-knowledge. Atma Bodha means self-knowledge. So we will have some discussion of these subjects. It, it is repeated there with uh, some more elaborations and some more depth so that we will discuss. Then we have so many uh, test books, uh, endless. Uh, even I don't know how many Vedantic test books are there. So <laughs> even uh, uh, there are so many thousands. <laughs> so therefore we can select. It. Okay. So uh, um, I'm sorry that uh, I am leaving before uh, 10 minutes. Okay. There was uh, time, more time because I have to reach the temple for the prophet. Okay. Hari Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudaschade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hare O. Thank you to everybody.
Thank you, Swamiji. Thank you so Hare much. Hare so we will conclude the class today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I think you can leave by yourself because Rakesh okay. is, yeah. It's